Hello everyone, my name is Jacob Hoskins and I am the proprietor of Bejak Music Enterprises and today I am going to be showing a little demonstration video of the Bejak Ergonomic Valve Guide uh, which in short is also known as the EVGs and I'm just going to give you a little demonstration of what these are and how you can set them up if you were to purchase one of these upgrades for your valves and um, as I have listed before on my website and other places and forums, they are available for Bach, Yamaha, Schilke, Van Lahr, Hoaxengaki valves, Ma valves from J. Meinelschmidt, Canstel, and hopefully BNS and a few others as I continue to acquire other brands and designs. So I'm going to show you an OEM valve guide setup for this is a Yamaha second generation C trumpet. And I'm going to be showing you the OEM setup, which is on first valve. Still very fine, very stellar, very smooth action from the setup from the factory. This is a high-end C trumpet. And then on the second valve, you think also the same thing. You'd think that there's an OEM valve guide in number two. But I'll show you. We actually do have an ergonomic valve guide set up on number two. And just to show proof that I'm not fooling around here, that there is an OEM valve guide set up on number one. Here we do have here the brass valve guide and the standard spring loaded inside of the first piston. So we have here, just to show you what we're looking at, we have the coated high carbon steel spring on this second valve, and then you have the top ring and bottom ring, which is nickel plated with a brass base, and these are to set up the spring in place properly in order for it to be an externally sprung piston. And then you have this little black piece. Let's see if I can get that focus. There we go. And we are looking at this little black piece that goes right straight through. You can see that right there it goes right directly through the spring barrel and there is no circular interior or any circular base to hold any interior or um excuse me internal spring the spring is on the outside now and so you're thinking well is this going to compromise uh valve alignment because you're going to have a ring right up here that sits on top of the spring barrel and it's seated tight it's going to be seated really tight with probably about two thousandths or so of clearance of wobble room around the top of the spring barrel but here's the cool thing is that it doesn't wobble around that's that is very tightly screwed on between the spring barrel and this threaded valve stem so this is not going to move the only thing that's going to move is this down here and the thing is we want that to slightly partially move so that there's a little bit of there isn't any sort of stress and so we want that free movement but we don't want any sort of like tight tolerances where things are going to bind up or not move we want very smooth quiet valve action i can get some clinking on the brass valve guide yeah so that's the difference between number one which has the oem setup and then number two which has the ergonomic valve guide setup and I will show you that there are felts in the valve button and also different size felts in the valve stem to compensate for this top ring. As I was mentioning before, I'll go back to that really quick. You were wondering if it's going to throw off valve alignment. It will by 30 thousandths or 31 thousandths to be exact of an inch. It'll put the piston further down into the valve casing by 31 thousandths of an inch because that piston is going to be pressed downward with that extra use of material right here that's going to be screwed on in between the valve stem and the spring barrel. And so you're going to want to have lesser felt on the valve stem and you're going to have more felt up here to compensate for that 31 thousandths. Um, that's just the specs and the dimensions of the top ring is about 31 thousandths of an inch is what would misalign the piston. But I can show you right now what we're looking at in terms of alignment. Nice compression. We are aligned. I can't show you the upstroke, but the camera would just be too dark. But 
that's what we're looking at. So this part of the video, now I wanna show you how to assemble the ergonomic valve guide, and I will go ahead and set the camera over and demonstrate how to put together an ergonomic valve guide and um, make sure everything is aligned and we can go from there and assembling it into the horn. All right, let's go ahead and do that. All right, now continuing on with the video, we are working on assembling the Bajak ergonomic valve guide to the standard piston. So we are working on a Yamaha C trumpet. So we're gonna go ahead and start putting together the Bajak ergonomic valve guide. So we have our piston here, which is just number three. As we are looking on that C trumpet, this is the valve we're gonna be working on, and that is the same horn. So we're gonna go ahead and start grabbing the parts and pieces. We have our spring. We have our dog bone, which is that plastic piece that is gonna guide right through the spring barrel. Then we have the top ring and the bottom ring, which has slots for the dog bone right here. And then we have our top part of the piston, which is all normal and is already pre-aligned with all the right belts and everything. So you can see the finger button, uh, finger button right there. Okay, so let's go ahead and start putting this thing together. Always start with the plastic piece here. You have this dog bone that is going to slot in like if you were to take a standard OEM valve guide from whichever brand you're working with. And in this case, we're gonna be working with Yamaha. Um, just to show you for reference what that looks like, here is the brass valve guide. And you can see from this Yamaha valve guide, you have this smaller section of the track on the spring barrel, and then this side is larger. And I'm looking at space here and then here. This is a little bit wider in terms of length. And then right there on that notch and in there, that is a little bit smaller. But the wing, the wing part is larger. Uh, yes, that is uh, wider in length. But here we're looking at the larger section of the valve guide being on this side and the smaller being on this side. And if we're looking at the number, and the number is facing the uh, mouthpiece receiver. The small end would be over on this side, large end over on this side. And so now showing you the dog bone, you have that smaller side right here, and you have the larger side, which is all of this right here. And this part, you'll see those little notches right there. I'll explain that in a second but we'll go ahead and continue with assembling the ergonomic valve guide. Another thing I will mention is that there are some brands where they are both sides symmetrical. So same surface area shape, same surface area shape. One side has the engraving, the other side does not. So you'll notice on other brands, like for example, if you're watching this and you ordered Van Lar or you ordered a Canstall, for example, or Hoaxingaki, you'll notice that the valve guide, the dog bone, has a little wing that sticks up only halfway on this part, like right up here. Um, that's just how they designed it, um, and that does have to that does have to go in a certain way. You can't have it upside down, where the um, engraving or the excuse me, the uh, font is sticking upwards. Um, it's actually going to be facing downwards, and then those little wing parts are going to be sticking up on the top because that's what's gonna be locking in on the valve casing on your trumpet, and um, then you're gonna get nice smooth action. Everything's gonna work and align and um, lock in together, and nothing's gonna be rotating in circles inside the casing. We don't want that. So we'll go ahead and continue on now. And in this case, it doesn't matter uh, with the Yamaha, the Bach, um, Shilke as well. Since there's symmetrical sides, symmetrical sides, you can go ahead and choose which side. I like to personally have the engraving on the top because they are the same in terms of dimensions and specifications. So now lock it in like that. And now everything is riding up nice and smooth. So you can see the, uh, the font is sticking up just like that. You got your small side over here and your large side, large side right over here. Now, to explain what that whole little notch thing on this larger side over here, that what, what in the world is that for? So my reasoning for that was so that when you're installing the bottom slotted ring here, you're going to then, we're going to continue with the installation, slot it over here, and you're going to slot it onto the dog bone. So the dog bone isn't going to be shifting over this way at all, anything like that. That little notch right there, 
is to keep it so that it's more centered onto the dog bone and isn't going to be shifting around this way and then rubbing up against the valve casing or on the spring barrel. We don't want that. So what that is going to do is it's going to hold its center onto the dog bone and it's not also going to interfere with the dog bone piece locking in onto the valve casing. So there's a little tiny piece, it's not going to break off, it's very small in terms of um, it being formed off from the, uh, the, the full body of the dog bone here. Um, it's, there's no way that it's really going to cause any sort of jeopardization or jeopardizing of it breaking off and then uh, it's, it's well suited and fit and built onto the dog bone so I'm not fearful that it's going to break off because if I was to make it taller then there could possibly be any sort of stress and it would snap off. So that little tiny ledge is what's going to keep it from um, this ring from budging forward or anything like that. You can see that the dog bone is moving with this ring. And that dog bone is going to be slotted into the valve casing and that ring, that ain't going to move. So there's very slight tolerance, um, but we don't want anything binding up either. So another thing you'll notice if you're uh, following along with this in instructional video, um, making sure you're doing it all right, you'll see all of the laser engraving on this ring should be facing upwards. So when you're putting it all together, you want to be sure you're following along and everything is properly set and good to go. Now we're going to go ahead and put the spring on and install it onto the bottom ring. And so you'll see here now that it is slotted onto this bottom ring and it's still seated onto the dog bone, nothing has fallen out, and we have the spring on there as shown. And we'll put the top ring like this and you'll see here it's going to fit right on there. It's just going to fit right on there like that. And now your spring is going to then fit onto that top ring like so, where it has a lip and it's not going to be rubbing up against the, uh, the spring barrel or anything like that. And finally, I'm holding onto that ring and you will also notice this ring, making sure that you're doing this right and you're following along with this video, um, the laser engraving will be on the top of the ring. So you want to be sure that you have that engraving facing upwards um, towards the finger button when everything is installed. We'll go ahead and screw the valve stem on. You can do a little tiny, little tiny tighten, little tiny twist. You can see nothing is moving. And that's the that's the OEM valve guide. Let me set that aside. Nothing is moving. Everything is now assembled, and we're all good to go. So this is this part of the instruction video of assembling the ergonomic valve guide. Um, for installing the felts, it is normally like what you do with installing a felt, um, like a replacement felt, you would take off the finger button. Um, I'll just quickly go through this. And you remove the old felts as such. I'll just take off this one to show and then put it back on. Yeah, we'll grab that there. There we go. And then you install the valve cap. And for what I do in terms of valve alignment to um, get that valve alignment back because I'm compromising the alignment with this ring up here by 31 thousandths, um, I, in, I include felts for the top of the finger button or excuse me, underneath the finger button. And that is going to allow for good alignment on the downstroke. And then I also include felts for upstroke. So that alignment is then um, consistent and not jeopardized or anything like that. So for the felts um, under the finger button, I'll just show you a demonstration. Put the felt on there. And then just screw the finger button back into place like this. And there you have it. You got the felt in there. You got your ergonomic valve guide all installed. And so this is that part of the video. I'm going to go ahead and get it onto, or excuse me, install the valve back into the seed trumpet. And we're going to see how it performs. All right, on to the next. All right, so now we are at the conclusion of our little video clip series here, if we want to call it that. And uh, we're going to go ahead and install the third piston back into this Yamaha seed trumpet. Uh, we just installed the ergonomic valve guide onto our third piston here. And so we're going to go ahead and continue the process here. It's really hard to do this one-handed, but 
let's continue this process. As so, we can then install our piston with our newly designed ergonomic valve that we for Yamaha. And there we go. Making sure everything is aligned properly. There we go. And that is the first time it was fitted into the piston, or excuse me, the casing. So nothing was finagled. Sometimes you have to finagle the spring a little bit by just rotating it a little bit. If something is off where, say, the spring is pressing down on the washer a little bit and it gets a little cockamamie, you just have to rotate the spring just a little bit and it might just sound a little bit less scratchy, a little bit more quiet. Sometimes that works. If it, if it uh, doesn't need any more adjusting, then you probably found the sweet spot. And those dog bones just need to wear in and get used to all that pump action there. I don't know if you can hear that, just a little bit of noise from that brass valve guide. So I'll go aggressive. So there you have it. That is the ergonomic valve guide. And um, if you have any questions, feel free to give me a call at 517-983-2243 or shoot me a text at the same number. Um, also, give me uh, shoot me an email at my email, which is jake at jakehoskins.com. Uh, shoot me a contact me message on my website, or you can reach out to me on Facebook Messenger or uh, any sort of forum, and I'd be happy to help you. So I hope this video helps, and um, yeah, I look forward to hearing from you soon. And um, if you have purchased a Bayjock uh, ergonomic valve guide, thank you so much for your purchase. And uh, it is such a great honor for you to be, um, well, for you all to be pursuing in this and for making the purchase. I know it's a kind of a big investment, but I want to make that investment worth it to you and providing you a high quality product. Um, that is my goal to solve some of the um, bottleneck issues that sometimes take place with these products and uh, with the, some of these things like the, the the internal springs on the the OEM setup and that kind of thing. I wanna I wanna make sure that your horn is going to uh, perform for you, you know, to overcome some of those flaws and things that might take place from a factory build. Um, so yeah, that's me. This is Bayjack Music, and um, I hope this video helps you. And I look forward to hearing from you soon. Thank you.